calculating your net worth. One of the most common questions I get is, Paul, how much are you worth? So let's talk about your net worth and the things you need to consider when calculating what you're actually worth. So you've got your assets and you've got your liabilities. And once you take your liabilities away from your assets, that gives you what your net worth is. Now, to put things into perspective, I was a millionaire by the age of 26 as an equity millionaire through my assets, which I'm going to talk about in a moment. But at that time, I had at most £10,000 in my bank. So it's crazy how you can think that you're a millionaire based on your net worth, yet you don't have the cash flow in order to have a million pound a year lifestyle as such. So for me, the definition of a millionaire is someone who has cash in their bank of a million pounds plus or has able to liquidate whatever the assets they've got inside of 24 hours and access a million pounds. So keep that in mind, that's my definition. However, the technical definition of being a millionaire is having a million pound plus net worth, which is not difficult. So let's break that down. So some of the things you need to keep in mind when you're calculating your assets. So first and foremost, your own home. So let's say your own home is worth 250,000, but the mortgage in terms of the outstanding mortgage is 200,000, because that there would be the debt. That is your liabilities, the mortgage. So the difference between the 200,000 pounds mortgage and what the property's worth, which is 250,000, is 50 grand. So you take that 50 grand and put it into your net worth. That contributes towards your net worth. Now, property goes up in value over time. So if that property becomes worth 300,000, then you're gonna to have to update your net worth because it's an extra 50,000. If the mortgage is still 200,000 because it was interest only as an example, that means 200 to 300. Now your net worth has went up an extra 50,000, 100,000 net worth in that example. So when you look at your assets from your own home, as well as any property investments, buy to lets, SAs, or other properties that you hold to rent out. So if you own those assets, then from that point of view, that there, the difference between the liability, the mortgage, and what the property's worth, that equity, you add that to your net worth. Do you own land, commercial buildings? Like all of these things is what adds to your net worth. For example, I own a piece of land that's got a valuation on it at 3.8 million. I have a loan against that property or that land for 1 million. So the difference between the one and the 3.8 is 2.8 million. So that 2.8 million in that piece of land goes into my net worth. That adds to my net worth. So this is what you need to be considering looking at. And there's a few other things, cash in the bank, savings. Do you have any jewelry? I have this little piece of jewelry that my daughter's made up for me. Unfortunately, I don't think that's gonna be worth much. <laughs> Watches and different things like that because it has some form of value. Furniture in your house, like it's things that you can have some sort of value, art, you know? Is it gonna go up in value? Does it have some sort of value against it? And then you've got the other things you need to keep in mind with all your liabilities because those liabilities need to be deducted against your assets, any personal loans, credit card debt, any mortgage um, payments or mortgage um, balances, you know, so things like that you need to consider. Another thing that you can add into your net worth is your life insurance value. Because again, that there has some form of value. If God forbid something happens, that, that that would access that money for your family. So technically that is part of your net worth. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more interesting for business owners. And this is where it gets a little bit exciting as well when you calculate your net worth. So let's say you have a, a business and that business has a turnover of 500,000, all right? Now, turnover is the income that goes into the business, but the business has expenses, isn't it? It has salaries to pay, it has marketing costs, it has you know the running costs, subscriptions, it has all sorts of different costs. But once all the costs are deducted, let's say you're left with 100,000 pounds profit. That's pre-tax profit. So that 100,000 is where you get taxed on at the rate at the moment in the UK, it's 19%, it is going to be going up. But before you even look at that kind of consideration of taxes, you've got 100,000 pounds profit. So this is where, again, it gets further interesting because if you're the shareholder of that business, then you have 100,000 pounds of shareholding value that can be added to your net worth. 
Now, the difference is again though, is that what industry is that business in? Because you then have the business value. And businesses are valued based on the EBITDA. So this is the earnings before interest and tax deductibles and all of that kind of stuff, right? So this is to keep it super simple. So let's say, for example, I have a finance company, a mortgage company. That mortgage company is approaching a million pounds profit a year. That's net after all expenses. So in the finance, in terms of mortgage companies, I've seen multiples in terms of a business valuation on the low end at seven times to the high end being 22 times. Like sometimes it can even be more. So let's just go with the low end of 7x, seven times your EBITDA. In this example, my mortgage company is approaching a million pounds. So let's just say it's a million. Then that would be seven times on the low end. That gives a business valuation of seven million if we were to choose to go and sell that business. In fact, we've already been made offers for our mortgage company that have been 15x. That means in this case, it would have been a 15 million buyout. Now, there's three shareholders in that business because there's me and two of our business partners, which means we would be splitting that equally because we've all got 33% in terms of our shareholdings in that. So this is where you then take your share of the business value of what the business is worth, and you can also go and add that into your net worth as well. And this is where things get crazy because again, it's the value as time goes on, your net worth will increase because the assets that you control will go up in value. Hopefully your businesses are continuing to grow and becoming more profitable. And I have several different businesses and different sectors as well that I can take the current business value of those. And again, there's no point taking the highest multiple. You probably take an average because there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to sell the business for that. And when you calculate all of that, you add that to your net worth. And very quickly, you can see how your net worth increases. I mean, by the age of 29, my net worth went from a million pounds at the age of 26 to 10 million. At the age of 29, now I'm 37, got a few more gray hairs, so my net worth has increased significantly more. Hey, look, you can pop in the comments what you might think what my net worth might be and take a guess, take a stab in the dark. And hey, if anyone gets quite close to it, then I'll go in and I'll comment and respond to your messages too. So if you get any questions around calculating your net worth, things to consider, or anything you're maybe not sure of, or want to get a bit more insights in, then just comment below and I'll be sure to go in and answer those questions to help you understand and calculate your net worth. Think about what's happened over the last year, the likes of Elon Musk. Elon Musk set a new record, new world record of losing 200 billion in the last year. Now, did he lose 200 billion? No, think about stocks and shares as an example. His share is a shareholder in a publicly listed company and Tesla has gone down in value over the last year. So when his shares, his worth of his shares that he owns in Tesla. Remember, other people, you can go and buy shares in Tesla, but he has the majority shareholding. He is the CEO there as well. So he has shareholding value. So if Tesla is performing and the share price is going up, his net worth is also increasing and going up as well. Just like Amazon recently, Facebook and other companies where their shareholding value has gone down because of the price, and that means their net worth also goes down too. So your net worth can also fluctuate it's not just always going to go up, especially when you talk about stocks and shares, cryptocurrency, you talk about property, property prices can go up and go down as well. So these are all things to consider and look at and something that you should always be monitoring, always watching and seeing what your net worth goes. But you don't want to get too caught up in that. It goes back to what I said earlier on. For me, it's how much liquidity do you have where you can get access to cash? Do you have cash surplus in your bank? And having money in the bank is not good use of money. Keep that in mind, it's been eroded through deflation or inflation, sorry, because inflation, when that's high, you know, your money's costing a lot more. It's not going to have the same buying power and it's not worth sitting in the bank. But you're going to have some funds there for you to make sure you can cash flow yourself and having assets that you're able to liquidate quite quickly to access funds should you have to. And then you've got longer term investments, which property is a big one there, which is not as liquid as such as liquid in terms of being able to liquidate because property takes time to sell, land takes time to sell and all that stuff. But again, if you've got some short term assets you can access and liquidate money and to a million pound plus within 24 hours, then in my mind, now you're a true millionaire. And it's a great feeling to get to that stage where you know if you have to access it, you can do that. 
to become a millionaire, you've got to put that money to work into assets, assets that are producing an income, assets that will go up in value over time. And if you do that, keeping your liabilities down, your assets high, it's inevitable you'll become a millionaire and it's inevitable your network is going to increase and it's inevitable that you're going to have access to that million pounds inside of 24 hours, which is a great feeling to have. So as always, if you have any comments or any questions, pop them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well. Hit that notification bell to be notified that any time that we drop any new content, because it's all about giving value to help and support you guys in your own journey too. So all the best and catch you guys soon. Thank you.